Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's take a look at Emmer, Emmer.js, which is a library for working with immutable data. That is not exactly working with immutable. It's more like making sure that you never really mutate the original object. And let's talk a little bit about immutability, why this is important, why this is very important, in fact, and why you should spend some time, some 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever the duration of this video is, as a developer to know about mutability and how this library works. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. You see in JavaScript, the way it works, if I go ahead and let me just go ahead and show you a very simple example. If you just go ahead and create an object over here, and if I say this object contains another object, let's say this is another object, and this object, another, another object contains another one, and then this says five, right? Now, how would you create an object two, which is basically just like this, but it contains this as six, for example, and you want to create it from the same object. Well, the standard way in ES6 onwards is to do something like, you know, obj dot, first of all, obj, then let's say another object is obj dot another object, then you go another object to, you know, another, another object, then you go obj dot another object, and then you finally say a six. Why did we have to do this? Because it could have another property, right? Like string, for example, and you don't want to lose that. That's why you destructure it. So now if I console log obj and obj2, you're going to see that in the browser console, we'll see that both of them have the same structure. This is the same structure and this is also same structure. The only difference is here, the a is five and here the a is six. Other than that, they are exactly the same things. So you can see that's how you clone an object. Now, a lot of times when you're working with code, you would want to create a copy of something, but not necessarily modify it. And the best example of that is when you're working with React components, let's say your object, which is, you know, state comma set state thing. Here you have, let's say you state of form, email is something and name is something and so on. So when you're updating the email field, you don't want to lose the name field and so on. So that is where you need to create newer object where you don't want to modify, where you don't want to mutate the original object. And that is what mutation means. Mutation means changing another object fundamentally somehow, right? So you don't want to do something like object dot another object dot another, another object dot a equal to six. Although if you ask me, which one looks simpler to you? this thing or this thing obviously this is much simpler right but this is wrong because over here you are actually modifying the original object what if i tell you that this library which we have over here the emerge.js library this helps you write syntax like this but actually under the hood it'll automatically i mean this is an oversimplification but it will automatically convert it into a syntax like this yes this is something which this library can do and this is something you should actually use when you have a use case where you have to mutate and you know you have to make sure that you are you want to mutate a certain not exactly mutate you want to get a copy of a certain object but at the same time you don't want to mutate the original implementation so let's go ahead and implement this emmer.js example with the official library. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the installation part over here. And I'm just going to copy the CDN installation over here. If you are using this inside the react or any other place, which can support NPM installations, you can just use yarn or NPM. But for now, I'm just going to go and paste this into the index.html over here. Once we do that, we should have access to emerge.js library because it's a JavaScript library. And instead of importing, I think we should be just be able to do, let me just actually comment this out. We should just be able to do produce. And it's actually immer.produce, but the idea is simple for immer.produce. What's the idea? The idea is that you call immer.produce and you then you specify an object which you want to work on, right? So in this case, what we want to work on in our case is obj, which is our first object over here. So I say that, hey, I want to work on this object obj, but what I want Emma to do is instead of giving me anything, just give me a draft 
copy of this object. Now what this draft essentially is, is that you can think about this object as this one, which is, you know, this object over here. But instead of you not being able to modify it, or if you modify it, it automatically reflects it in the original object. Instead of all that stuff, this draft you can think of is a safe copy where you can directly mutate any and every sort of change you want. Right. So just like we discussed, we can do draft dot another object, another obj dot another, another obj dot a is equal to six. And that's it. That's all it you need to do this mutation with the emma.js. And over here, the only nice thing about this is that obj3 has not modified the original obj in this work. So if I console log this now, you're going to see my another prop is string which is you know my obj3 let me just actually console log this in this way so that it's also clear which object is which so if i go to console now you can see obj3 is this thing over here which contains a as 6 and obj is this thing over here which contains a as 5 but all it took is just a single line and actually a couple of lines but you can see the immense benefits you get now, if you want to add another property over here, or, you know, let's say modify, modify some property over here and add hello world, you can just do it. And the equivalent of this would be having some modify property over here, but that's fine. You can even leave that out because you can see over here, you get the modify some property directly and the original object is still not mutated. Now, this is important. This is important because over here, what essentially Emma does is that it helps you not create and destructure the copies of an object over and over again, right? Because that is something which is performance intensive as well as unnecessary, as well as looks very hard on eyes and it's very hard to maintain. You can already see this looks much worse than this, right? And this is fairly complicated in terms of operations and things which it is achieving compared to this thing right here. So that's why I believe if you want to do any sort of deeply nested object manipulation where you want to maintain the immutability of the original object, the way to go is to use a library like Emma. Now, I also recently came across this article which tells you how these people were able to bring one of their API endpoints down from 16 seconds to 3 seconds and all they had to do was remove all the fancy destructuring and creating a new object every single time from all these arrays and instead of that actually mutating the elements itself and that is something which Emma would have solved which the creator also says in a tweet and that is because when you are making Making all these changes inside of a draft, inside of this draft area inside Emmer, you're actually mutating, you're actually mutating the draft implementation of this, but you're not applying all the changes to the original object that is, you know, merging the two objects and creating a new one while maintaining the integrity of the first object. You're not doing that as long as you are still inside this function right so it only happens one when you quit this function and then this object is constructed which means that you can do a lot of mutability whatever you want inside this function you're free to do that instead of just cloning all the objects all the time yeah i mean that's 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 one of the benefits which you get out of Immer is that you guarantee the immutability of the original object while having an interface where you can mutate it just like you would want to do it. And that is that is something I feel is beautiful. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm just gonna go ahead inside my CDMRC file over here and I'm gonna change this to just script.js and I'm just gonna keep this terminal one as this thing. And uh, let me just go ahead and actually make this as h1 emmer.js example and i'm going to leave this link in the description of the video this code damn link and what you can do is visit this playground link and if i do it for example at my end you will directly be opened into the script.js file and you will have your console logs flowing into the browser so you can try out emmer.js without actually setting up anything without downloading anything just from a click of your browser that's how it will work and you can just switch over to the browser consoles and you will see how emma.js works. It's great if you're following this YouTube video, you can probably follow it again with, but this time with a code and playground on your side. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. This very short, very small crash course on mutability and why does it matter and why this is much cleaner. That's all for this one. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you 
in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDump's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.